Moses Kuria may never join the Kenya Kwanza Alliance. And I want to tell you in this analysis why. One thing that people have come to realize is that Moses Kuria is a political tedapreneur, attention seeker, really wants some relevance, and an alarmist. That was the few, that, those are some few adjectives that I can use to describe Moses Kuria. And I just want you to see the way he's been changing goalposts until the recent one. When he was receiving treatment in Dubai, after Musalem Davadi and uh, Moses Wetangula joined the Kenya Kwanzaa, he was so um, out, he came out there trying to criticize the Central Kenya team that were in Kenya Kwanzaa that they were being sidelined by saying the way they were not seen in the posters. Then the next minute he said that Azimio is a amorphous group that do not that do not have a direction. Whilst he's still in Dubai, he met uh, uh, William Ruto and Oscar Sudi. Then the following week, he met the uh, the Azimio team, that is President Uru Kenyatta and some cabinet secretaries from Central Kenya. Then on coming back in the country, when he was holding that prayer rally, he came out to say that yeni omungu but before that to remember the interview at jkl he once mentioned that uh, uh, he is actually viable to be a running mate whoever wants him to be a running mate he's available he will take that when he was saying this he had initially announced that he was not going to vie for any seat but was going to just make sure that he builds the chama chakazi party which for me i think that was just a smoke Look at the way he's been changing goalposts. After that, he met Oka and told Kalonzo Musioka that he could not, he could join Oka only if the Oka is not working in the Zimio. Then that way that did not work out. So he was left with no option because he wanted to join Oka. That did not work. And I don't even think he wanted. I want to feel that he was planted there as a mole to try to spy uh, on these people. Then the next day, he now say, boom. I'm going to work with William Ruto with other 21 parties. So that that came. But before he said that, he announced that he was now going to seek Kiambu gubernatorial race. Guys, it has been one goalpost after the other, one goalpost after the other. Now, but there is something that is very consistent on Moses Korea. The JKL interview, he said he was viable and ready to be a running mate. Then there was an interview that he also did at, uh, at I think, NTV. He mentioned that he was ready to be a running mate. In fact, let me, I want you to listen to this two interviews. Just get a beat. But if that opportunity comes and we find ourselves that we are in convergence, why not? We are here to serve Kenya. It's not about us. We, we, this is a career we chose. We are in, the, in leadership and we are here to add value. So if we think in our opinion and in the best of our judgment that the position of deputy president would assist us to make Kenya a better country, why not? <laughs> Lakini hakuna kitu kama hiyo nasimama. Hiyo ni kitu naamuliwa na mtu. Unaweza unaweza kuchaguliwa na mtu na kwambia tutafute kura pamoja? Na kwa wakati huo hakuna mtu amenichagua. So na wakija. Wakija hiyo ni story nyingine. Ukiwaona wapea namba yako. Labda kumaliza. Kwa wakati huo kwa wakati huo hakuna hakuna mtu ambaye amejitokeza. Akijitokeza tutakabiliana nao maneno. If you listen to that, one of the key determinant the denominator a denominator in his political matrix is the issue of the running mate. That, that is there. So yesterday there was another interview at K K24 and Kimani Ngunjiri, who is the Bahati member of parliament, came out to announce, actually said that he doesn't have an idea of any political talk with Moses Kuria or other 21 parties and he doesn't have an idea who are these 21 parties. According to him, they must also form alliance with parties that also have numbers, which that is the natural law. You cannot just bring parties in terms of having 50 parties, but each party have only the party leader. <laughs> so he mentioned that he doesn't have an idea whether there is talks with Moses Kuria. Let me tell you, if there are two leaders in Kenya Kwanzaa that you should never despise, that is 
Kimani Ngunjiri and Oscar Sudi because they are actually the ones that are the whistleblowers. If there is something that they want Kenyans to know, and of course, they, I think the Kenya Kwanza deputy president have known that um, they, are, they are a bit radical and Kenyans give attention to them. Something that Oscar Sudi says and something that Kimani Mujiri says, I can tell you, those are directly from deputy president. I don't need to tell anybody, even you, you have asked that question. First, he is saying he has 21 parties. I don't know these parties. And maybe he can come and tell us here. We don't know them. Kudia had said before that he must himself look for somebody who will give him running mate. He said that on his statement. Yes. No, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. And I want to tell you I'm inside the UDA. Yes. We are not aware of any, any, any discussion. And so, guys, let me tell you why I think that Moses Kuria is not going to find it easy there. But before we do that, if you're watching this video and you have not yet subscribed, kindly take a second and subscribe. Also click the notification bell so that when we publish a video, YouTube will always notify you. And I want to continue saying thank you to the 10,000 subscribers in this channel. With the almost now 45% subscription rate, I know that we are on a journey to 20,000. Now, number one, Moses Kuria's life in Kenya Kwanza would be very hard. And that is why I'm telling you that by all means, he may not make his way there. The first is the running mate blackmail. He has already blackmailed the Kenya Kwanza team on the issue of the running mate. And the issue of the running mate is uh, his script, according to, if you listen to that interview by Kimani Gujiri, his plan is to make a coalition with these other 21 parties. I think these 21 parties might, might work under Chama Chakazi. Then he takes all this group to Kenya Kwanza. With that, he shall already create a perception that he has brought numbers there around the deputy president. Then with that, he might be in contestation for the running mate position. But now that is the reason why he is going to cause a lot of distress there. If William Ruto picks Moses Kuri as a running mate, is going to bring back the voices of dissent. The likes of Kimani Ngunjiri seems to already hardliners. There is there are many anti Moses Kuria within UDA hardliners because first he is a latecomer. Regeta Geshago just stepped down the other day. Alice Wahome have not spoken. Um, there are the other leaders that have been there, and his loyalty is questionable. So the issue of running mate is a blackmail. And do you know why? what he's doing? He's actually using two stones to eat the bird. The plan, he has already announced that he's going to vie for Kembogi Baratorial uh, seat. So what he wants to do is at least if they're going to form a coalition with Kenya Kwanza, then you know they agree. Then instead of him being given either running mate or direct kit ticket for the Kembu gubernatorial seat. That brings me to my point number two, the party conflict. The party conflict is this. Huh? Moses Kuria's competitor in central Kenya is not Jubilee. He doesn't have a problem with Jubilee. His competitor there is UDA. Because f within the coalition, um, you are allowed, and of course I was discussing with a friend from uh, central Kenya, and I was telling him that within a coalition, you are allowed to field candidates. If in Kenya Kwanza, in a governor's, in a governor's race, UDA, Chamber Chakazi, or Ford Kenya or ANC can field a candidate. What is not allowed is being a member of two coalitions. But within the coalition, you can have the inter parties competition. Now, that inter parties competition is what is bringing the conflict of interest. That conflict of interest is going to make some is going to make it make his life in that alliance very difficult. For example, let's go to Kiambu. William Ruto has Django Wainaina and uh, I think uh, the current senator Wamatangi. These two are eyeing the UDA ticket. Then Moses Kuria is eyeing one seat with the Chama Chakazi. Then you know Azmiyo have uh, James Nyoro and Tujibebe party leader Kaboho himself. So you want to tell me that UDA will accept not to field a candidate there, but give Moses Kuria direct nomination. 
that is not going to work and that is just one and of course guys i'll do a political a critical analysis on the kiambu gubernatorial race probably tomorrow that is just that if you go to nyeri the women rep is there there is an a chama chakazi candidate seeking that and the human rep is seeking through UDA and there are the other Azimio candidates. So because of that inter-party conflict, really the Kenya Kwanzaa team, the UDA team, especially from Central Kenya, will feel like they are being shortchanged. And again, the moment a candidate loses nomination in UDA and jumps to Kenya to Chama Chakazi and he or she is accepted there, it's already going to cause some friction with the UDA team. So that is also my second point. Number three is the succession politics in central Kenya. What Moses Kure is looking at, and if you listen to what he's saying, he's saying that Uru Kenyatta has been enjoying support. What he actually wants is to seize the 2022 general election to be a moment to produce the central Kenya successor. I don't know whether Moses Kure can be the next central Kenya kingpin. But this is what I feel that the Central Kenya caucus will not provide him with a very warm blanket for him to breed himself and be the next Central Kenya campaign. That is why they will not allow him to be the William Ruto's running mate. They will not allow him to be the second federal to deputy president in Central Kenya. They won't allow that. So because of that, eh, he will always have to be fighting very small battles here and there. Very small battles between him and Kimani Chungwa, between him and 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 uh, and, and, and Susan Kihika, Ndindi Nyoro, Alice Ohome. These battles are going to be... There is a lot of mini betrayals within... There will be a lot of mini betrayals within the Kenya Kwanzaa that are going to suffocate him and not give him an opportunity to achieve what he wants because I think they don't want him. And he's not really the succession, the successor. And again, William Ruto do not want to produce the Central Kenya successor. He's not interested in that. And because of that, that's what will even make his day very difficult there. The moment he broods, he, he thrusts himself up as he wants to be the next Central Kenya kingpin, William Ruto will actually raise the red flag that, look here, this is the person that might challenge me in 2027 or in 2032. And that's why he will be subdued. Number three, Korea is a mall. <laughs> Number four, finally, Korea is a mall. It is the same reason why Moses Korea left UDA was because they, he was perceived as someone who was dining with the enemy. He was perceived to be working there for, to be planted, that he had been implanted there by President Uru Kenyatta. When he went to Oka, he was sent to Oka to try to get a stand. That's why he went there with the stand that, oh, I'm joining without you joining as a meal. He was just sent there by William Ruto to go and f find out uh, how, which way occur. Have they decided to join as a meal or they can be persuaded? He was sent there. So because of the way he has been vulnerable, no one is going to trust him there. I will not be shocked if he joins Kenya Kwanzaa today, then a week, the next week, the newspapers are reporting that he's being branded a mall there. He's very unpredictable. Even if within Kenya Kwanzaa, Moses Kure will still maintain that his best friend is Raila Odinga, his best friend is, Willi, is Uhuru Kenyatta, and that will not stop him from meeting Raila Odinga the next day, or even attending Raila Odinga's rally. That is Moses Kure. So because of that, I don't really think that he is viable. And with this pronouncement by Onestmas, Kimani Ngunjiri, the Bibahati MP, I can surely tell you that Moses Kure is not heading to UDA.